Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 12th of September. India asks Pakistan to fully implement ICJ verdict on Kulbushan Jadav. Gilgit Baltistan is part of India, says activist at UN. And Trump pledges to hit Taliban harder as Afghan peace talks dead. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday launched a pension scheme for farmers from eastern Charkat province. Under the scheme, farmers between 18 and 40 years of age will get nearly $43 monthly pension after reaching 60 years. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday launched several developmental projects and schemes including Pradhan Mantri Kisan Mandhan Yojana for farmers from pole-bound eastern Jharkhand province. He said that every farmer will get $42.05 per month after attaining the age of 60. Prime Minister Modi also inaugurated the new building of the Jharkhand Assembly and a multimodal terminal at Sahib Ganj. The multimodal terminal was built by Inland Waterways Authority of India on River Ganga. The Prime Minister said the terminal will have a cargo storing capacity of 30 ton per year, a stockyard and parking and berthing space for two vessels. This terminal is the Adivasi Bhai Bhanoko, the Kisanoko, Apne Utpad. अब पूरे देश के बाजारों में और आसानी से पहुंच पाने में सुविधा होगी। All small and marginal farmers who are currently between 18 to 40 years can apply for the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Mandhan Yojana. Jharkhand will go to assembly polls later this year, and the formal announcement of dates are yet to be made. India's Foreign Ministry on Thursday said that India will keep trying that judgment of the International Court of Justice is fully implemented in the case of Indian national Kulbushan Jadav, who is in Pakistan's custody. This came after Pakistan blocked consular access to Jadav. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Ravish Kumar said on Thursday that India will keep trying that judgment of the International Court of Justice or ICJ is fully implemented in the case of Indian national Kulbushan Jadav who is in Pakistan's custody. This came after Pakistan on Thursday announced that there would be no second consular access to Kulbushan Jadav who has been sentenced to death by a Pakistani military court for alleged spying. Pakistan had on September 2nd granted consular access to Jadav after a prolonged legal battle with India in the ICJ. In its verdict on July 17th, the World Court had ordered Pakistan to undertake an effective review of the conviction and sentence of Jadav. हम फिर भी लगातार कोशिश करेंगे कि International Court of Justice की जो जजमेंट है उसकी implementation हो, full implementation हो और we would like to remain in touch with the Pakistani side through diplomatic channels. Jada was given a death sentence in 2017 for alleged espionage. India denies the allegations against Jadav and maintains that he was kidnapped by Pakistani operatives from Iran where he had business interests. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Interior Minister Ejaz Ahmad Shah has admitted that Pakistan has failed to get support from the international community over the Kashmir issue. Islamabad has been left red-faced after its desperate attempts to internationalize the issue.
Pakistan's Interior Minister Brigadier Ijaz Ahmad Shah has admitted that Islamabad has failed to get support from international community over its stand on Kashmir issue. Bringing a major embarrassment to Prime Minister Imran Khan, Shah blamed Pakistan's ruling elite for destroying the image of the country. People do not believe us, but they believe India, thinking Pakistan is not a serious nation, he said during a talk show on a Pakistani news channel on Wednesday. His remarks came a day after Human India rejected Pakistani Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi's claims at the UNHRC and reiterated that the revocation of Article 370 that granted special status to its Jammu and Kashmir region is its internal matter. India hit back saying a fabricated narrative on Jammu and Kashmir has come from the epicenter of global terrorism and from a nation which conducts cross-border terrorism as a form of alternate diplomacy. Moving on, activist Senge Etsering said on Wednesday that India is the legal owner of Gilgit-Baltistan. He accused Pakistan of changing the demography of the region, which is under its illegal occupation since over 70 years. In a major embarrassment to Pakistan, Gilgit-Baltistan activist Senge Etsering on Wednesday called the occupation northern region a part of India. Sering, while speaking at an event at the UNHRC in Geneva, said, India is the lawful legal owner of Gilgit Baltistan, and the members of the United Nations need to realize that Pakistan has become a big stumble block for the last 70 years. Director of Institute of Gilgit Baltistan Studies, Washington, D.C., Sering also accused Pakistan of changing the demography of the illegally occupied region through construction of so called development projects. It is time for India, which is the lawful, legal owner of Gilgit-Baltistan, to step up in the United Nations and outside the United Nations, claiming Gilgit-Baltistan, not just uh, with symbolic gestures, but uh, building relationship with the people of Gilgit-Baltistan. Because what we have seen, that what India has done in Ladakh, by giving them autonomy right now, giving them own, their own union territory, is, is uh, something that we could uh, look towards. Gilgit Baltistan was originally a part of India's princely state of Jammu and Kashmir until its illegal occupation by Pakistan more than 70 years ago. Pakistan's apathy is visible in the fact that the region doesn't find a space in any government framework and is largely treated as a colony. US President Donald Trump has said the United States is hitting the Taliban harder than they have ever been hit before. Trump's comments came at a time when he has called off the Afghan peace talks with the Taliban after the group admitted to an attack in Afghanistan last week that killed 12 people, including one U.S. soldier. U.S. President Donald Trump has said the United States has hit the Taliban harder than they have ever been hit before, just days after he cancelled a meeting with Taliban leaders and declared the Afghan peace talks dead. Trump's comments on Wednesday came as he spoke at a remembrance ceremony for the 18th anniversary of the September 11 attacks that killed nearly 3,000 people. The president scrapped the peace talks with the militant group over the weekend after an American soldier was killed by a suicide bomber in Afghan capital Kabul last week. We had peace talks scheduled a few days ago. I called them off when I learned that they had killed a great American soldier from Puerto Rico and 11 other innocent people. They thought they would use this attack to show strength, but actually what they showed is unrelenting weakness. The last four days, we have hit our enemy harder than they have ever been hit before, and that will continue. Trump had hoped to cap months of U.S. negotiations with the Taliban militants who control large parts of Afghanistan with a secret meeting that was to include Afghan President Ashraf Ghani. The meeting was aimed at securing an agreement to pull U.S. troops out of America's longest war of 18 years. Restoring faith in humanity, an Afghan teenage singer and her band members have been teaching music to a group of street children while also supporting them financially. Apart from trying to warm the hearts of the Afghan public, they hope that people will accept music in its entirety.
Seventeen year old Masuma Mohammadi and her band members take a group of street children to a Kabul cafe at least twice a week and teach them music, from playing musical instruments to reading notes. Teaching children is just one aspect of the band's advocacy as they have been trying to warm the hearts of the Afghan public since they formed their group Kindness Ambassadors in 2018. Kindness Ambassadors have also been supporting the children financially, giving up most of their average $75 per concert earnings in their private performances to pay for their education. Masuma said the most enjoyable moment of the teaching is when the children follow the music notes which she is singing. اینا باید این سن خود همو در رویای کودکان خود باشه همو مکتب باید بخونه باید درس بخونه ما د چشمه اینا همه یعنی ناامیدی را دیدم ما خواستم که مثلا او خود این مثلا هنری که دارم بتونم از استفاده کنم و برای اینا درس بتونم و اینا را مثلا یک چیز برشان یاد بتونم Masuma says although they have received positive feedback from their audience whenever they sing in public there are times when they get ridiculed she hopes that one day Afghanistan, where the Taliban once outlawed music, will accept music in its entirety and people like her will be able to express their love for the craft. Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has blamed Myanmar of dragging its feet on resolving the Rohingya crisis even after signing bilateral agreements. Referring to the two failed attempts to start the repatriation process, Hasina said, Myanmar has failed to win over the trust of Rohingyas. Bangladesh's Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has said, Myanmar is dragging its feet on resolving the Rohingya crisis, although it signed bilateral agreements with Bangladesh following pressure from the international community. Referring to the two failed attempts to start the Rohingya repatriation, Hasina on Wednesday said, Bangladesh has seen that Myanmar could not win trust of Rohingyas in creating a conducive situation for their dignified return. The Prime Minister further added Bangladesh has sent Myanmar information about 55,511 Rohingyas for verification, but the country identified only a part of these people as their citizens. Fleeing military atrocities in Myanmar, more than 743,000 Rohingyas took shelter in Bangladesh since August 2017. Since then, two attempts to begin the repatriation of the refugees in Bangladesh have failed after the Rohingya refused to go back to Myanmar. The refugees said they want to return home, but under specific conditions, including guarantees of citizenship and security and improvements in the lives of Rohingyas living presently in Myanmar. India is recreating the iconic Malgudi railway station from its internationally acclaimed television series, Malgudi Days in Southern Shivamogga District. The railway station was featured in a classic television series based in Karnataka during the late 1980s. Boarding a train to Malgudi will soon become a reality for all the fans of the iconic television series Malgudi Days. The Arisamala railway station in Shivmoga district of southern Karnataka province is all set to be renamed as Malgudi railway station. The railway station was featured as Malgudi station in a classic television series based in Karnataka during the late 1980s. Artist John Devraj is making sure to leave no stone unturned to bring alive the fictional station of Malgudi. So I am trying to recreate Malgudi right here, how it was done, what are the various elements that have, have to, uh, that went into the creation of Malgudi, that is what I have tried to do that. So uh, it's very beautiful and uh, this centre should become a very important centre because it contributed to the making of a national serial which was acclaimed internationally. Malgudi Days was a collection of classic short stories written by Indian writer R.K. Narayan. The television series directed by Shankar Nag gained worldwide recognition for his gripping plot and interesting enactment of its characters by some of the most celebrated Indian actors. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.